At least 33 states across the country have been in the middle of debating transgender issues in state legislature. It is a hot topic. 60 Minutes Plus correspondent Seth Adone investigated one bill in Arkansas that became law in March, and he got a chance to speak with a 15-year-old trans male who is a plaintiff in a lawsuit that's suing the state of Arkansas. First, good morning to you. He joins us live from Athens, Greece. Good to see you, my man. Good to see you, DeMarco. It's a fascinating story we got to do down in, in Arkansas, looking at this 15-year-old who is working with the American Civil Liberties Union to sue the state of Arkansas. He's a plaintiff in this case, uh, and he's trying to stop this law from going into effect. Right now, it will go into effect in late July. It would stop him from getting this gender-affirming health care that is allowing him to live life as a, as a trans male. And Seth, can you tell us about gender affirming care and what's at stake for these kids if the law goes into effect? Suzanne, a lot is at stake. This boy who we look at, who we profile, Dylan Brand, is 15 years old. He started transitioning about two years ago. Right now he's taking a testosterone. So if he stops taking that or when he stops taking that, assuming this law goes into effect in July as is as planned, he would no longer be able to take this and he would start redeveloping some of those uh, feminine uh, characteristics. So for him, this is very important. You know, you have a, you have a much higher rates of suicide uh, among transgender people. They say uh, that this is uh, a matter in some cases of life and death, being able to take this, being able to live in the in the role the gender role that they feel is their own and I hope you'll actually be able to see the piece because it is we it's about a 20 minute long story and we look at the process of him really grappling with this and also his mother grappling with it and saying these are really big decisions they recognize this is a lot to be to be deciding to do but he says since I was a little boy a little kid I felt like a, a, a boy trapped in a girl's body it is a hot topic for us. so many of our viewers here in Southern California. What is the general consensus from the scientific community on gender affirming care for minors? There is a group called WPATH, DeMarco, that's 1,500 medical professionals who set up a standard of care, and it is quite involved. They encourage first that you look at all any sort of psychological issues, family issues, social pressures, before you even start at looking at some of the care. And then the care is graduated. You'd start with something called a, a puberty blocker, which someone who's not transgender and might be going through puberty at a, a very young age, a parent could, uh, working with a doctor, have this prescribed. The same type of thing would happen to somebody who was starting this care. And then after that, there's the step of, of cross-sex hormones and such. So obviously there are people who are, are very concerned about this, very concerned about minors and, and parents making these decisions. And there has been a lot of uh, a pressure also to pass laws like this. That's why, as you mentioned in the lead into us, there, there are about 125 pieces of legislation, most of them dealing with trans people in sports, some of them dealing with transgender issues. But this is, as you mentioned, certainly a hot button issue. And, and we look into it in Arkansas, where this is the first ban on transgender care to go uh, to become a law in the US. Mm. So Seth, uh, these families of these children who are on these drugs that could affect the rest of their lives, what are they going to do if this law goes into effect because it could stop their plans? The doctors we spoke with, the doctors who are joining as plaintiffs in this lawsuit, who are caring for these kids say they worry, honestly, Suzanne, they worry about suicide, uh, that it can be that significant. And, and even the Republican governor, Asa Hutchinson, who uh, supported other or allowed, did not veto other laws that had targeted trans people in Arkansas, he vetoed this saying that he felt this was a, a vast government overreach. And one of his concerns when he vetoed it, he said, was he's concerned about people like Dylan who are already in the throes of getting this sort of gender affirming medical care. They would, they would have to start, stop it. Hey, you talk about the struggles, you know, that these kills, kids deal with, especially when you talk about suicide and all of that stuff. It is so important uh, to address. Uh, Seth, thank you very much. We're going to tell our viewers how they can watch this in just a moment. But a big thank you to you. You are actually on vacation <laughs> and you're joining us this morning for our viewers here in Southern California. So we appreciate <laughs> that, man. And it looks beautiful behind you as well. Hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> 
it's beautiful. It's kind of Los Angeles weather here in Athens, about 90 <laughs> degrees. It's it's nice. Oh my nice. gosh. Way to rub it in too. Way to rub it in too, right? All right, everybody here is like, oh no. All right, Seth, blissful. good to see you, man. Take care of yourself too. We appreciate it. <laughs> That's a big smile there. Now, don't forget to watch Seth's full report right now on 60 Minutes Plus. It's available on the Viacom CBS streaming app, Paramount Plus. And Such an important topic. And, you know, it's amazing that he's doing it on his vacation. That just goes yeah. to show you how crucial it is. And I know for a lot of these families, they're considering possibly moving out of the state so mm -hmm. their kids can continue to get treatment. But that's a big step to have to move because yeah. your child is, you know, being stopped at something they started. Mm -hmm.